front. I'm Deborah Harris. I've been in real estate um, 33 years. Um, I, my slogan is I'm older than dirt and I still sell it. Uh, a lot of it, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, actually, I've been in this Keller Williams office for 13 years. It was the first Keller Williams office in Atlanta, and this is the number one volume real estate office in the in the state of Georgia. And I'm I'm be glad to give all y'all cards after I've finished. You know, uh, I think Dustin just informed me that I'm fixing to be the real estate go-to gal anyway. Um, actually, on my website, you can go and pretend like you have a house for sale, and you can pull up comparables on my website, or you can set up in, uh, searches in certain areas, and it'll automatically send you new new listings in that area. So, if you wanted, you know, particular zip code, and you wanted it less than fifty thousand bucks, then you know it'll send you whatever comes up in that zip code for fifty thousand bucks, and it's pulling from FMLS and. GAMLS. So if you see two that are this really the same house, it's because it's pulling from both of them. That way you're not missing any listings that are in one service and the other service and not not just one of them. What's your website? Um, Experts.net And I'll give y'all um, cards, business cards that's got it on there. Um, and my email's on there as well. We, um, we pay a guy a bloody fortune to go and do these market reports for us every quarter. We started doing this back in, I think, 2006 when the market was still good. And then when the market started tanking, you know, um, you know, you know, the, it, the all of all of the charts started changing, you know. But the, our office actually between the six offices, we have 1,300 agents, and we pay this guy to go and do and. and put all the research together so like for example if you go into a multiple listing service DOM stands for days on market but that same house might have been listed with three different real estate agents so the true days on market is just for the last listing period so it would might be 92 or whatever that number is when in reality that property was overpriced and it's been on the market for 200 and something days the reality about these charts and the reason that we started having these once a quarter uh, going through this is because if you get a property priced right, and I'm going to show you, you know, the statistics on there. If you get it priced right, it's going to be on the market 29 days. You know, if you get it priced wrong, it's going to be on the market 200 and something days. And so that that was the whole purpose in, in educating this. And then uh, about statistics. But in addition to that, if you go make yourself teach it to other people, you become an expert at what? Statistics, right? And I, um, anyhow, the, um, let's see, oops, all right, this is the areas of Atlanta that we are we're covering. Um, we are not covering anything, um, Clayton County, Henry County, the southern counties are unfortunately not a part of this report. So what we are covering is all of Fulton County, you know, um, this is uh, Douglas County, Cobb County, Cherokee County. Uh, Forsyth County, Hall County, Gwinnett County, DeKalb County. Um, those are the counties that we're covering in this report. And Paulding is in there too. Um, this is the um, this is a, a market share so showing that we're the only company that has taken um, had a positive market growth in um, number of uh, closed transactions during uh, the bad economy that we had which I'm very proud of. Um, that we don't need. Okay, this, um, this one chart right here is, is gonna show you the difference between 2011, 12, and 13 uh, monthly sales. And so you, as you can see, the monthly sales are going up. And that's really kind of ironic. Uh, the one reason that the monthly sales is going up is because prices are going up. All right, but it's also ironic that right now in Atlanta we have the the lowest number of listings on the market in 20 years. You know, and, and um, aren't you glad to see the uh, new construction coming back? And it's funny how I really don't think of Atlanta as having a um, cyclical kind of market, and these st statistics are from the fourth quarter of last year. Our new statistics will be coming out. I think in the next week or two, as a matter of fact.
but it's funny how you can see the cycles where your lower cells are in January and they start picking up all the, through the summer and then they got, start going down again, you know, after kids go back to school. So, but, you know, some markets like, you know, Florida, for example, you know, they, they virtually have no winter market as far as real estate sales go. Okay. This is a change in the uh, number of sold quarterly. And so, it, you know, as you can see, you know, really we're down because we don't have the inventory to go with the sales right now. You know, so there's not that much on the market. So if you're out there, you know, hustling, you know, some um, for sale by owners and some of those people, and, and I'm a candidate for buying, you know, stuff on the north side of Atlanta from you as well. Okay, and this is, a, this is very interesting. This shows you, by price range, what, what, what percentage of sales are in any particular area. Well, if you look, less than $100,000, you have a whole lot of sales there, but really your biggest number of sales are from 100 to 200,000. And that's, that's gonna have a lot to do with you know, where the median price is. And we're gonna go, actually some of these charts, I'm gonna show you what the median price is in different areas, and I have it broken down into different areas. But obviously, if you're gonna go play in the million dollar price range, uh, there's not many buyers out there. Oh well. This goes back to having uh, been uh, looking at, at these sales for a long time. There was a, t for, from about 2008 to uh, up until about, uh, I'd say the start of 2012, this chart was all red, which meant that the markets were all worse than they were in the same time period from the year before. So now we have, as you can see, in these price ranges from you know 200,000 to a million plus, those, those price ranges are moving up. Prices are going up and they are moving up um, compared to, to this time last, last year. And the, you know, it's interesting that the market is moving down in those under $100,000 price rackets. Why do you think that might be? Well, it, it is going to happen, but we've got less foreclosures going on, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, that's a little bit surprising to me. All right, this shows the uh, distressed property is, uh, is identified as stuff that is either a foreclosure or it is, um, or it is a short sale. And everybody knows what short sales are, I assume? Well, a short sale means that the the lender of the person that it owns the house is willing to take a loss to let that property be sold. I'm doing that. I'm doing one of those right now. I hate them because they, they, they actually take a lot of time, um, take a lot of time. But um, you know, but the lender is owed 135, and I'm selling it for 85,000 bucks. And you know, who knows when they're going to finally come in and say that you know they'll take the offer, but. It's a necessary e evil. But as you can see by on the fourth quarter here, look at how how at one point in time, you know, we were at 55% of the sales were distressed sales. You know, and we're down to 20%. And different areas of town, of course, have, you know, different percentages of, of uh, distressed property. And the, right here is um, it broken down by price range. So as you can see, 50% of the short sales are under, under uh, 100,000 bucks. Isn't that incredible? And, and it's surprising to me that they're, that, that they're so low in the upper price ranges. But it's, I tell you, I'll tell you an interesting situation. The higher the price range, the more likely it is to be paid for by cash. Isn't that interesting? All right, this goes back and shows you the number of this is supply and demand and as you can see you know these the the you know the gray stick there there's our there's our uh, demand and it, and there's our supply and as you can see we have a gap between what b between what the, we need for product and we don't have any product to sell you know so you know it's amazing you know I, 
our office has an intra, intranet, and so people are always sending us email. If you find something like this, please call me. I've got a buyer for it. That used to never happen, but now you can't find the product for for the um, for for your buyers. Um, and this is the number of active listings sold and supply month month by month. Um, Using a, uh, but anyhow, we've we've uh, had uh, listings from a high of 39,000 in May of 2008 to to 11,585 in December 2013. So that's a 70. Per, we're 70 percent lower number of listings now than than, than uh, we had in the past, and it's reflected in. That's another reason why prices are starting to escalate. Um, and this actually just shows that um, this shows that the sales do you know have you know the prices are starting to rise and uh, the number the number of sh this is distressed sales on the bottom those have kind of flattened out you know we don't have as many distressed sales as we did um, a year ago <laughs> and this goes back to supply and demand you know 2009, 10, 11, we had too much product and, and not enough buyers. And now you come over to st starting in uh, February of 2012, we don't have enough. We don't have enough product to fill um, to fill the demand for people wanting to buy real estate right now. And if y'all have any questions, don't hesitate to to. Um, and this goes back to show you, you know. We, at 2009, there, there's your, your prices, how they, you know, continued to go down, and now we've almost gained all of our prices prices back up. Uh, last year, I think it was up uh, 20 over the Atlanta market overall, 22 percent over the year before. And this is the median sales price by quarter, you know. And so, um, as you can see, you know, our prices are going heading back up. The um, black bar is 11, the gray bar is 12, and the, uh, the um, uh, red bar is 13. So you can see we're about to gain, have our prices back to what they used to be before crash time. Um, and, and, and as you can see by this chart right here, our median sales prices are going up. Well, that, that's logical. If the prices are going up, the median sales prices going up and there's the overall change is up 22 percent you know when you go and average all those out um, this is uh, the number sold by, by price range and the chart on the left shows the under 200,000 price point versus the the one on the right is 200,000 and higher but that that goes back to we have um, less of an inventory than we did the previous year. It is sales price. All right, the red one is is, is 2013 on here. The, as you can see, we the high point was um, 2006 was the the high point, and as you can see, we're about to get get back to where we were before the crash hit. I'm surprised, you know, usually real estate runs in five-year cycles. I don't know if you all know that. And, um, you know, to me, this one took seemed to take longer, you know, to recover the, than previous ones. Because uh, when I started in real estate in 1981, interest rates were uh, 19, 20%. And so they had what they called negative amortization loans. So you might qualify to buy a house at 14% interest, but you're really paying 19% interest, and they take that negative interest and add it onto your principal every month. So just like we had a, you know, a negative situation going on here with pe where people's, you know, prices dip because, you know, of, of all kinds of things, but it it was the same kind of situation in the early 80s because. They were adding all the, the extra interest on the back end of your principal, you know? So all of a sudden, everybody else was upside down then, too. Wow. And um, this is the S, S to L. That means sales price to list price versus the, the supply. 
And that goes back to, to you know, prices are going up because we have uh, very little supply on the market. Oops, been there, been there. So, Deborah, what does it tell you? That, that sales list price, that means it's, it's selling for higher than it's going to sit what, what does that mean? Percentage of sales to list price. Actually, on, on all your HUD and Fannie Mae stuff that's less than $100,000, if you go in there and bid on it, you need to you need to count on spending you know 10, 15, 20 percent more than the list price if you want to get the bid because there's that much competition on there. But you're you're you know we've got no supply directing the the, the prices up. And a median sales prices that the median sales price there's a median sales price on distressed versus non-distressed property. So that goes back to the highest percentage of foreclosures and distressed sales is under 100,000, which that's why that, that equals out that way. We talked about that. Okay, this is kind of interesting and this is broken down by price range. And because here is what prices are bringing Per, you know, versus what the list price is. So down here, less than a hundred thousand, they're getting ninety-three percent in the overall Atlanta market of what the list price is. Because if you think you're gonna walk in there and offer them, you know, seventy cents on the dollar when it's a listed piece of property, odds are it's not gonna happen. That's why it's very important for y'all to go tackle some of these fizzbos. Um, because see, look at how strong the percentages are. Only if you're dealing in the the uh, over a million dollar price range are you going to pay 85 cents on the dollar. All right, median days on, on market. Um, this is d days on market is DOM. In case you folks don't know that, but days on market is from list to closing. Okay, so um, right. A balanced market is usually six months. So right now we're at 50 days, 50 days from list to close. That is very short, very short, you know. And there were times back in 2008 and eight and uh, seven, um, eight and nine that you know days on market was approaching 200. That's what is that? For sale by owners, FISBOs. Uh, and here it is broken down to to you know by by uh, by price range. So as you can see, all all of them are less than you know uh, except for the million dollar up market, less than six months, which is a balanced market in the Atlanta area. And and this shows us that uh, you know there less and less time on the market, and that whole chart used to be red as well. So now, you know, except for the million plus market, you know, we've got a, a, a you know, balanced um, positive thing. It is a seller's market right now. This goes back to supply and demand. We don't have any supply and prices are going up. Um, the, going back to these charts, one of the, the things about these charts is if you get a piece of property price right, you're going to sell it in a less than less than 30 days. If you don't, if you don't, then then it's going to by the time you pay your mortgage payment and by the time you you uh, um, figure in time and all this other stuff, you end up netting less money. So this goes back to you know. A lot of people want to what I call bid up a, a piece of property. So I come in and I say, "Oh, your house. Here's here's why your house is worth this amount of money. Let's say it's two hundred thousand bucks, okay? And somebody else is just dying to get that list. They go in there and go, "Oh no, your house is worth two hundred forty, two hundred forty. Well, it, they're really doing the client an injustice because of all the time they're going to lose because the, you've got a very educated public that's going to go out and look at Zillow and Trulia and all these other websites and they're going to know that it's overpriced. So, you know, I, I personally won't waste my time on stuff that's overpriced because I, I don't need to go bid up listings to get a listing, you know, and tell somebody it's worth more than it is. So. Um, you got 40% of them are going to have to have a price reduction. And usually this is, it tells you what percentage they're going to need to take 
off of their price. So usually it's somewhere between um, seven, eight, eight percent. It's usually around eight percent that are going to be uh, over, are overpriced. That number used to be a whole lot higher previously as well. Um, and so once they reduce the price, there. This goes back to what's. If you don't get a price reduction, you're going to get 98.4% per of your, your list price. If you have to go through a price reduction because it gets stagnant on the market and, you know, people know, have come in there and kicked the tires, so to speak, several times, you're going to end up getting 89.2. So this is how you judge, you know, what, do you, what would you rather net? Would you rather net 89% or 98%, you know? And there's the true uh, figures based on that okay but you're you're there's a time quotient figured in right there like if you, if you hold on if you stick on your price you may get it but you may have to wait that too. exactly and how many mortgage payments have you made and what have you lost in that period of time exactly we actually have a uh, at the end of this we have a, a thing where you go back take these very charts and I also have it broken down by area which is really what I want to concentrate on the most with you guys is um, um, that, that's going to show you if you do it here in this area this is what you're going to net and this is how many days it's going to take but we ha actually have it uh, broken down that way and see look at this you know set out on the market at median days on market 17 I've never seen that in my lifetime 17 because you got so much cash so because a lot of these little small uh, single-family houses you know, they're paying cash. I, last year I sold a whole bunch of bulk houses to Chinese and they were in there with cash, you know? And so, and I never put, and it never actually became part of this because I'd list it the day before I, I sold it. So it never went into FMLS to be a part of these statistics. But, you know, all of those were somewhere between 35 and, you know, $70,000. Huh? Looking at the $400,000 houses, 13 days on market. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it goes back to to, to medium pr sales prices. So if you take, you know, the total closed listings at 100%, you know, you're getting 95.2% sales price to list price and 51 days on market. That's low. All right. So the people on the left got got it wrong and they 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 uh priced it wrong and they had to go through a price reduction people on the right got it right okay and so these people over here they they had it previously listed and and um they had it previously and it was on the market 258 days on the average these people right here these people had the the wrong agent and the wrong price these people had the, the wrong agent and, and the wrong price and so it was on the market 74 days but these people these people had it had the wrong agent the first time and the right agent the second time and so they ended up getting getting this all right so it goes back to you know well I'm going to try to get this try to help you in the long run you need to price it where the market will take the market will pay for it and it be gone because you're going to net more money. It's not going to be tired. Okay, fellas. All right, for every hundred, you know, for every hundred listings out there, 37 are going to fail. 63 are going to get sold. And then of the 63 that are sold, 26 are going to have a price reduction, and they're going to be on the market 117 days. And 37 uh, are going to be uh, on the market 21 days, and they're going to get 98.4 percent. And uh, you know, and 63 percent of 100 listings are overpriced. Not mine, okay? And this goes back to supply and demand. A balanced market is six months, and so if you looked at you know over a million bucks, we got uh, a lot of new houses going up over a million bucks. 11 months worth of supply. You know, the resale, you got 14 months worth of supply, but pretty much everything less than a half a million bucks, you, you, got, a, you got a strong, strong market. Um, 
And this goes back to, you know, it's a seller's market under 100. It's a seller's market under 200. You know, everything below the yellow line over here is a, you know, is a, a, a seller's market below 750,000 bucks. That's strong, very strong. And uh, comparison to last year, um, and this goes back to the balanced market, you know, strong buyer's market still in the uh, pricey stuff. Okay, price, we've talked about that. I'm going to skip this part. All right. All right, let me go to my other chart. Get it out of here. Yes. Escape. Okay, escape. If y'all um, send me an email, I don't mind sharing these with you. It, I'll share. It's a, actually a link that I'll send to you. Okay, and there's my other ones. And what did I hit to, to get this? Back to big. You see that 121 percent right down there? Yeah, it's going all the way down to the bottom. You see where it said there's a slide? Right there? Yeah. 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 Oh, I see. It's that one right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right, this to me. This is my favorite one right here, and again, we're covering the same areas. But what the what we've got, what we have here is we have it broken down. See how all of these uh, counties have a chart, uh, a number corresponding to them. You know, so you got you know the the 70s, uh, 71 to 75. That's West Cobb County. 81 to 83 is East Cobb County. So depending on. And if you're beginning, if you're beginning investor, I'd say stick to your backyard that you know the best because you know if you go try to traipse all over Atlanta, you know the traffic will kill you before anybody else. You know. Uh, so I would suggest starting out, you know, in your own backyard because it's easier and you're not going to get so frustrated, and uh, especially if you have another job. But you know that area the best, and, and I don't know where, where y'all live, but I mean, any of these areas are, most of them are good areas. I mean, I don't do war zone. And so this breaks it down by area. So like for example, 61 through 66, that's Gwinnett County. You know, that tells you the number that are sold in each one of those. Now, it can be a little bit misleading, because like area 71, that's Vinings inside the perimeter of Cobb County. Well, that is a very small, small market with a high demand and virtually no inventory. So, 71 has a small number of sales in there because there's, you know, it's a small area. And 53 is a small area. It's uh, Cab County, you know, inside of 285, but south of I-20. So, it's a small, small market area. But, all right, now this this chart right here. Everywhere where you see the big black dot right here, those are where we still have more than 20% foreclosures in those areas. Well, the 20% or more foreclosures, that used to say 50%, you know? So, so this number has come way, way, way down to, to mean, well, areas with 30 plus, plus percent. That used to be uh, 50%. So the market, has the number that has sold in those areas has gone up. The quantity sold in all those green, the dark green areas has gone up. The number has, of sold properties has gone up 20% or more. Quant so we're talking quantity on this particular chart. Okay, so what does, that, what does this tell you? That's where your demand is. Where is your demand? You know, it's in areas where you've got growth in the percentage of numbers sold. And this being the median line, there sh that shows you the increases in the numbers and the number sold. So you that this one that's 65 percent more sold, that's part of Cherokee County. You know, that tells you that there's a high demand of people wanting to go to Cherokee County. You know? Good question. 
This is, and just like the exact opposite right here, you know, a lot of people are not wanting to go and buy in South Fulton County. Uh huh. I know it's kind of your trap, but what is the man like in Henry County? Um, Henry County um, is, I don't, I don't really know. I haven't looked at it, but I do. If you want to uh, shoot me an email and put Henry County, County stats, I can pull those up and email them to you. But I would imagine that they would be very similar and may, probably a little bit better than, because this, um, this is South Fulton right here. And South DeKalb, where South DeKalb is going to be, uh, you know, DeKalb County is going to be 42 and 53. So I would imagine better than, than those particular markets, I would imagine. I wish they would include Clayton and Henry, but my, my suggestions have gone over like a lead balloon. Only because, uh, only because um, I, investors are still going to those areas, you know. And, and well, and price, I mean, prices were the worst in, in, in um, Clayton County for the longest time. And they're just now starting to recover because they lost their school accreditation. And what they, actually what happened is a lot of people that were living in Clayton County, when they lost their accreditation, what they moved? They moved to Henry County. Sure did, you know? So they moved further south. All right, total distressed as a percentage of sales, you know. Um, you know, when you go and look at like area 131 and 132, we're, this is, uh, we're in area 132, this is Sandy Springs. We only have 4% are going to be distressed sales. So if you're looking for a foreclosure in Sandy Springs, it's going to be gone the day it comes on the market because there's virtually none of them out there. Um, this divides it up into uh, foreclosures versus short sales. And so as you can see, um, area 23 is uh, Midtown. Area 24 is DeKalb County, city of Atlanta. There were no foreclosures in there yet. So as a percentage of sales, you know, you still, this goes back to this is South Atlanta right here, and this is South DeKalb, it's uh, 41 and 42. Um, 191 is uh, where you still have a lot of foreclosures going on is, um, uh, is, Paulding, uh, is uh, Douglas County. And then 114, that is, um, that is, Forsyth, that is uh, Cherokee County, North Cherokee County. And this goes back to short sales as a percentage of sales. The line up and down is like the median line. And so it pretty much says the same story as the foreclosures did. You know, there's just not that many in the same, same areas. And this, the areas that you have the highest appreciation and the highest demand are going to have the, the least amount of foreclosures in there anyway because, and typically a, a, a good portion of that is driven by uh, school systems. Alright, this goes back to the median sales price and actually this chart says a lot but areas like in the, where the red is, that your median sales price is less than a hundred thousand bucks, okay? So if you're going to be buying a, an investment property to fix up and resell, you don't want to be much higher than your median sales price, okay? Because, because why, why, why should they go and pay more? You've got to go justify your price more. On the other hand, you know, you take the areas with the, the green or the dark green, you've got median sales prices. Three hundred to over four hundred thousand dollars. So in those particular areas, you'd be fine if you paid a couple hundred thousand bucks and put another fifty or sixty thousand into it, because the minute it goes on the market in new condition, it's gone. Actually, through this group last year, uh, some uh, some people bought a house uh, here in Sandy Springs, and they paid I think two hundred thousand for it, put a hundred fifty on it. And we sold it before it was finished for 500. You know, so it just, it's all relative to, to what these charts are telling you. You need what kind of price point you need to be. Below the median sales price, it's going to be gone, gone, gone. Okay? You try to mess with, you know, doing something more expensive in, you know, in a lesser price area, 
it's going to take you longer and you're going to say, why did I do this? This breaks it down to exact numbers. Here's, you know, you, you, can, you can thank me for the rest of your life for this chart right here. Okay? It's, it's your median sales price because, see, down here in South Atlanta, your median sales price is $50,000. So you better be buying something for twenty or twenty-five thousand bucks, depending on what you're doing to it, because you need. When you take all your sales, there's the median on it. Whereas if you come over to area twenty-one is um, that is Buckhead, and area one thirty-two is Sandy Springs inside the perimeter. Yes, it's over there. Yeah, well, your your land costs are, you know, they buy houses around here for three hundred and knock them down and put up something for a million bucks, you know. So it, it all ro rotates back to what's, what's the land cost. And typically, for those that don't know, usually about 30% of what your cost is, is your land cost. So when developers go and buy a track of land and they add you know, 25,000 to 30,000 per lot development cost, that, that, they're, that they're, they need to be selling you know, based on Let's say, for example, I've got a, a if you pay $200,000 for a track of land, you put 20, 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, $5,000 in there, then you've got two twenty-five dollars in it, you better be selling that thing for eight, nine hundred thousand bucks. Okay? Does the market justify that price range in that area? You know? So that's kind of the backwards way of how to figure out, you know, what somebody's selling. I just sold a house over here on Lake Forest. Uh, about a month ago and it was only on the market and it was a nice five bedroom rental property split level but anyhow the people paid three hundred and seventy thousand dollars to knock it down and it's going to cost them another third twenty five thirty just to knock it down so it's it's all relative to supply and demand okay but that's my favorite chart is the the one with the median sales price all right, now this, this chart right here tells you, you know, what areas of town is the median sales price going up and how much is it going up, you know? And so if you take the, the green areas, that shows the median sales prices are, are, are going up. And if, I mean, all, actually, they're going up all over town, even the red areas. It's just that the red areas are less than, you know, 10% where the prices are going up versus the dark green areas are going up... Uh, 40 percent uh, or more Vinings is in there that little tiny market and this tells you how much they're going up area 53 boy look at that area I'm surprised to see that but that is a uh, Decatur in case y'all want to know look how, how how the prices have soared median sales prices soared over there Decatur especially Decatur North you know Decatur North is you know Nice area. They've done a real good job remaking over Decatur, in my opinion. I'm really surprised to see that. So that what does that tell you? You can go make some money in Decatur because the prices are going up drastically. Uh, days on market. Um, and this, if you go and look at this chart versus the one, the chart that has everything to do with median sales price. Well, it's taking longer to sell the higher price houses, and so this chart actually kind of follows that one too. You know. But your median days on market is 51. That's low. I never saw it that way. And this, you know, changes in the days on market. And this chart tells you, it goes back to telling you what, what percentage of the list price by area that the properties are bringing. And see, you know, they're, most of them, almost all of them, are 90%. And the worst one is 88%, which is only 12% off of the list price, you know. I always tell people, you know, if I'm representing the buyer, you know, it, it's, it's a good time to insult the seller, <laughs> you know. It doesn't matter where you start. It just matters that you go out there and, you know, start something, you know. Uh, and this goes back to, to you know, 40% of the listings are priced wrong in the first place and um, they need to have a, a price reduction. And this goes back to, you know, agents not getting it listed pro properly the first time, and so they're having to go through, 20% uh, of them are having to get uh, re relisted. Um, 
this is a, the months of supply. And so, um, actually, everything in here is six months or less, uh, months worth of supply on the market. And the um, places where you've got the, the dot on there, those are uh, more than 30% are still distressed. Um, the market's going more and more toward short sales versus foreclosures because of the incidence of um, vandalism when a property is vacant. And so, uh, m you know, short sales have soared in most recent years because property's taken care of. And this breaks it down to the number of months, um, you know, supply in each of those particular areas as well. Where, who's, who's from, is anybody from Gwinnett? Okay, Gwinnett, Cobb, a lot of Cobb, Fulton. Okay, North Fulton. Okay, uh, what, what am I forgetting? Cab County. Cab County. Wow, you're the Lone Ranger over there. Yeah. Yeah, and Decatur's a hot, a hot market. I'm thinking. Yeah. And this goes back to this is what I was explaining to you a little bit earlier. In all those these charts that I've demonstrated for you, if you shoot me a email that says stats, I don't mind sending you a link with the stats in it. But you know, you, you, all of these numbers came off of that that the, the charts that I just showed you. So if you take you know an area and let's say area 23, which is Midtown, you know the number sold was you know uh, 130. The year-to-date change in percentage is 4.8. The foreclosures, there's no foreclosures in Midtown. The number of distressed sales is 3.1%. Uh, your median sales price is half a million. The change in the median sales per price is it's gone down by, you know, is 9.3%. Number of days on market, change in days on market. So when you go through the end of this and do those calculations, oops, it, you know, it'll tell you, you know, if you price it here, it's going to take you this long. If you price it here, it's going to take you this long. Where do you want to be in your pricing? And if you nail the price, you're going to be happy and you're going to march on to your next deal as, you know, quickly. Uh, any questions from anybody? No questions? You covered it. You did good. All right. Well. Is the exception as far as the recovery? Um, Atlanta is um, is a is a unique anomaly because Atlanta is usually the last into an economic problem and the first out. And the reason it's the first out is because we've got the busiest airport in the world. We've got uh, the third busiest place to make movies now, uh, and energy costs are very low. So. It's unfortunate, but you take the north central United States and those places are never going to recover. They're talking about taking whole neighborhoods and bulldozing them down from farmland because there's, there's nobody there. And the reason is, think about how severe this past winter was, you know? We lost maybe a day or two, you know? Those people up there lost weeks and weeks and so that's weeks and weeks that workers you know, weren't working, and if they were on hourly wage, they weren't getting paid while that was going on, or that is, you know, lost production. So the reason that the, the South will continue to boom, and it's booming right now, is because of our low energy costs and our low low number of, you know, time when we, we, we are not on the market and not moving things. So uh, Atlanta, it's a great place to be from for that reason. And so even if you look at, um, you know, a lot of times you'd hear the news and the news, I just get so mad at the news for not telling you the whole picture all the time. And so the news would say, well, Atlanta's not growing the way a lot of the rest of the country is. Well, if you'll take and factor in the fact that 90,000 people moved here because they're sick of the snow, it would probably end up being the same, but they never, you know, tell you that that little ditty. So I think our biggest year was when they had the hurricane down in Louisiana, like 250,000 people moved here that, that year. But even in the bad economic times, you know, we're still getting over 90 to 100,000 people moving here. And that's, I think that that's going to continue to go up. So as long as you have a high growth area 
and a climate for encouraging businesses to move here and low you know energy costs there's no reason for it not to continue to be that way what's your email address um here let me get get y'all some business cards if you want one thank you and you can send me an email also um also you can uh, go go to my website and you can it, the way you can sign yourself up in there okay and when you sign yourself up you put that you either have a property for sale or you want to a property to buy if you want a property to buy you've got my card if you want if you want to buy a property then it, you can set up a search and you can go set it up more as many searches as you want in there and as mark property huh thank you uh, and as property comes on the market it'll automatic the first email will be kind of big and then as property comes on the market it will send you an automatic notification you can send get it sent daily or hourly or however you want to but then if you got a property for sale or you're trying to research one you go and say i have this property for sale and it will um it will um give you comps now the comps will um pull from fmls and gamls so if you see the same property in there twice it's because it's pulling the both the property is listed in both um both georgia mls and first multiple listing service Uh, first of all, so that's a way for you to get your comps from first multiple listing most services. <laughs> so any other questions? Yes, I've seen a slightly prices because the rate is not actually moving here at that rate. Yeah, that's that is that is happening. Yes. In Cobb in Cobb County. I'm also delighted to hear that, that we're getting a soccer team here again, you know. And as my, I, was, I, actually, I actually, when they first announced that the grades were moving, I thought that that was just, you know, you know, a fluke and that they were really trying to renegotiate with the city of Atlanta. I was absolutely shocked. But what they did, I don't know if you know this, but what they did is they went and found out where most of their their customers are coming from and figured out that that was in the center of where most of their customers are coming from and that goes back to income you know school systems you know and affordability of, of paying for those tickets you know and so because if you look at you know east cobb east cobb has a well three really great schools so that goes back to following your good school system that's why you're moody and ha prices stay up so high all right any other questions well thank you guys and if i could be of any service to you guys don't hesitate to text me or um email me because we do get back to everybody <laughs>